Do you want to hear a story that will blow your mind? There once was a king who loved playing chess. Actually, it might have been checkers. No, no, no. It was, it was definitely chess. Okay, okay. So there's a king and he likes chess. One day, the king proposed to his kingdom that any person who could beat him in a game of chess could ask for absolutely anything and he would provide it. One day, an old beggar who had played chess his entire life in the slums of the kingdom heard of the challenge and decided to accept. The king and the beggar played one game and despite the king's efforts, the beggar was far too skilled and the king lost the match. Now the king was a man of his word and so he told the beggar, whatever you ask for, I will provide. The king was a little worried though. Was the beggar going to ask for his golden robe which was worth a million dollars? Or maybe he would ask for his massive castle which was worth 10 million. Maybe he would ask for the king's most prized possession, his crown which was worth $100 million. But the old beggar was wise, far wiser than the king, and he didn't ask for any of those things. Instead, he told the king, I would like $1 on the first square of the chessboard, and then for you to double the amount on every square after, until all 64 squares have been used. The king laughed, and he thought the beggar had gone mad. But he wasn't going to complain. Surely it would only cost him a few hundred dollars to fill the chessboard, maybe a thousand max. And so he went to his treasury and took out a thousand one dollar coins and began doing as the old man asked. On the first square, he put one dollar. On the second, two. On the third, four. On the fourth, eight. On the fifth, sixteen. The king began howling in laughter. He told the beggar, you fool, you've blown your one chance at ever being rich. The beggar smiled and he told the king, shut the f up you pretentious f you are obviously a genuine Neanderthal if you think I would have wasted my one opportunity to get out of poverty, a thousand dollars wouldn't even get me a flight out of this kingdom, now close your f mouth and keep going. The king got offended and then had his guards cut the old beggar's head off for disrespecting him. And that's the end of the story. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time. Okay, okay, relax, I'm only joking. I know what you're thinking. Tooch, why would you tell us this pointless story? What wisdom could I possibly gain from it? Well, allow me to explain. Let's have a look at the chessboard again. So at the fifth square, the old man would have had $16. Doesn't seem like much. Jump two more and he would have had 64. Again, still not a lot. At the eighth square, he would have had 128. The ninth, 256. And at the 10th, he would have had $512. Now, that still doesn't seem like much. But what you have to know is that by the time we reach around the 20th square, he would have had $1 million. By the time we reach the 30th square, he would have had $1 billion. Finally, once we get to the 64th square, the last square on the chessboard, he would have had approximately 18 quintillion dollars, which is a number that is just completely incomprehensible to the human monkey mind. What I've just explained to you is the idea of exponential growth. This mathematical concept shows that when you double something consistently, things can get unfathomably big really quickly. It's the reason why people were so scared when they heard that COVID numbers were doubling every few days. But COVID and imaginary gold coins aren't the only place where exponential growth can occur. In fact, it's happening right now with technology. A guy called Gordon Moore had an observation that the number of transistors on a microchip doubles every two years. This observation eventually became known as Moore's Law. Essentially, what this is getting at is that every two years, our microchips are getting more powerful, quicker, and cheaper. Think of human technology back from our caveman days. We had clubs, then we had spears, then we had stone tools, and then I don't really know what happened after that. But eventually we got the wheel and then we started going all industrial and using coal and steam engines. This was all slow progress, but it was progress nonetheless. But eventually we hit computers and our tech started accelerating at a crazy rate. From never being in the air and just starting to drive those funny looking cars, we now have spaceships landing back on Earth and our cars drive themselves. We went from slow progress over thousands of years to quicker progress over hundreds of years to even quicker progress over decades. Now, if we think back to the chessboard, it's hard to say exactly where we are. Things are looking exciting, but we haven't quite made those unfathomable jumps yet. But I think we will. If we think of every square on the chessboard as two years, by the time we hit the 30th square, we'll be blasting off into realms that 
our minds just can't even conceive of. You see, people often underestimate exponential growth because it takes a while for the big changes to occur. Just like the king in the story, he thought that the doubling was happening so slow that there was no way that the end result was going to amount to that much. But if he hadn't have cut the beggar's head off, there would have been a point in time further down the line where within two or three jumps, the amount would have doubled so much that it would have been far, far larger than his $100 million crown. You see, half of the time period does not equal half of the change. In fact, half of the change occurs in the one period before what is considered the explosion. So while it may take a long time for the big jumps to occur, when they finally do, Things really blow up. This point in time where intelligence and technology explode far beyond our understanding is called the singularity. I don't know what it will look like, but if Moore's law holds true, and it seems likely that it will, the future will look unrecognizable to us in a very short amount of time. Another way to think of it is like this. If you were to take a medieval lord from the north, some dude from the 1200s, let's say his name is Ned Stark, you could probably put him in the 13, 14, 15, 16, or 1700s, and for the most part, things would still be relatively the same. You'd still be using horses to get around and fires to warm yourself. Sickness and poverty would still be prevalent. Your life would be pretty bad if you weren't rich. Now that's over a period of roughly 400 to 500 years. Not much has changed. But if Ned was thrown into the world between 1900 and 2022, he would probably behead himself from disbelief. In roughly 100 years, Ned would have come to experience phones, computers, fridges, microwaves, heaters, washing machines, cars, airplanes, FaceTime, the internet, space rockets, robots, vaccines, TVs, and many other things that we consider commonplace for us today. It took almost 500 years for Ned Stark to experience something that was slightly different from the world in which he knew. It then took him only about 150 years to realize a world that was drastically different from the one in which he knew. Imagine experiencing that level of progress and change in decades and eventually single years. That's the future that we're heading towards. I'd love to know what you guys think of the idea of the singularity and what you think the future might hold. Feel free to leave comments if you'd like. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.